it's time to take a look at the 2024 AP Chemistry exam questions. The few response questions have just been released, and now we're going to walk through the answers. Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and this is my walkthrough for FRQ question number 5. I need to let you know that I don't work for College Board, and this is not an official answer key. You'll need to wait a few months for that. I'm just a guy who's been teaching AP Chemistry for the past 24 years. And if you're getting ready for next year's exam, then check out my full AP Chemistry course videos right here on YouTube, as well as my comprehensive review materials, along with exclusive tips and tricks over at ultimatereviewpacket.com. Now, let's get started. Question 5 is one of the shorter free response questions. It's worth 4 points. And in this one, we have a case where hydrogen gas and iodine gas are reacting to form hydrogen iodide at an elevated temperature, as represented by the equation that we see here. And there's a delta H given for us as well. Now, part A says to write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kc for this reaction. Well, we know that Kc is just the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that would be Kc equals the concentration of Hi squared all over the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2. So if you got that, then give yourself a point. Don't forget that an expression is an equation. So that Kc equals needs to be there. Now part B, we have H2 and I2 are added to a previously evacuated container and allowed to react. And it tells us that at a certain time, the value of the reaction quotient, Q, is 0.67. We have a particle diagram here that is an incomplete representation of the system at that time. The diagram shows the relative number of hydrogen gas and iodine gas molecules, but the HI gas molecules are not included. Draw the number of HI gas molecules needed to complete the diagram so that it accurately represents the system. So we have a calculation here that we need to do. The Q is 0.67. So we're going to write the expression for Q, which is basically the same as the expression for K, except you know we're not necessarily at equilibrium, so we can't call it K, so we'll have the Q here. And we're going to plug in some values that we see. Now Q is 0.67. It's given to us in the problem. So that gets plugged in here. And if I look at the diagram, I have three hydrogen molecules and two iodine molecules. So I'm going to plug in the three and the two in the place of the hydrogen uh, molecule and the iodine molecule concentration there. And when I solve for HI, well, I cross multiply, I find that the HI quantity squared equals about 4.02. Take the square root, and I find that HI is very, very close to 2. This tells me that I should have two HI molecules drawn in the system at that particular moment in time. So I'm going to draw in two HI molecules, one there and one there. So that's how you can uh, solve that uh, question there for part B. Now part B2 says a student monitors the number of moles of HI gas over time. We're going to hypothesize an experimental change that could have been applied to the system in the rigid container at time t to result in the change in the number of moles of HI gas shown in the graph. And we're going to assume that the student did not add more HI gas to the system. So notice that this time t, all of a sudden, the HI moles jumped up. And why did that happen? Well, there are a couple things that could have happened. Somehow, we shifted the equilibrium toward the product side. And we could do that by adding reactants. And so we could have added some hydrogen gas. We could have added some iodine gas. Either of those would have worked to uh, raise the amount of hydrogen iodide gas that was present in the container. Now there's something else that we could have done as well. Notice that this reaction has a negative value for delta H. That tells us that this reaction is exothermic. So when a reaction is exothermic, that means that heat is a product. And so remember, if we remove a product, the equilibrium shifts toward the products. And so if I remove heat, we're going to make more HI. And so maybe that's what happened too. Perhaps we removed heat. Probably a more uh, common way of saying that is you just lower or, or decrease the temperature. So I would say either or any of those three answers would be acceptable for 
part two. Now part three says after equilibrium is established, the mixture is transferred to a larger container at constant temperature. As a result, would the number of moles of HI increase, decrease, or remain the same? And justify your answer. Well, normally, if we transfer the uh, mixture to a larger container at constant temperature, the equilibrium will shift toward whichever side uh, has more moles of gas. Well, if we look at the equation up here, we see that there's a tie. There are two moles of gas on both sides, which tells us that since it's a tie, there's not going to be a change. And so since the numbers of moles of gaseous reactants is equal to the moles of gaseous products, the number of moles of HI would stay the same in this case when transferred to a larger container. I hope you uh, learned a lot from watching this. Hope you got the answers right if you were following along or if you uh, did this question as part of your AP exam here this year. Uh, my name is Jeremy Krug. Thank you for watching. I hope you join me again very soon when we're going to go right along to question number six.